This video was brought to you by NordVPN. As the 2024 election nears, politicos have started turning their attention to the upcoming Republican primary. Now, polling suggests that former President Donald Trump holds a commanding 40% lead over his opponents. But despite Trump seemingly dominating the race, the primary has still attracted some serious interest, largely because it's got some seriously controversial characters in the running, including, perhaps most notably, businessman Vivek Ramaswamy, another bold millionaire railing against the woke left and the mainstream media. In fact, Ramaswamy is catching up with DeSantis in the polls, and a plurality of Republicans saw him as a winner in last week's debate. So in this video, we'll take a look at who Ramaswamy is, his wild policies, and whether he might actually beat Trump to the nomination. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. First off though, who really is Vivek Ramaswamy? Born on August 9th to Indian immigrants, Ramaswamy spent most of his youth in Ohio, attending both public and private schools. After graduating from high school in 2003 as the class valedictorian, he attended Harvard University to earn his Bachelor of Arts in Biology, where he achieved high academic honours and graduated in 2007. He then enrolled in Yale Law School and earned his law degree in 2013. During this time, he also worked for hedge fund QVT Financial, where he managed the firm's biotech portfolio as a partner. He invested in numerous pharmaceutical companies, including Retrosfin, infamously known for its association with Martin Scarelli, the company's CEO who was found guilty of securities fraud, as well as using questionable company practices, such as unreasonable drug price hikes. Despite the controversy though, these investments proved remarkably successful for Ramaswamy, and he became a multi-millionaire before the age of 30. In 2014, Ramaswamy left QVT to start his own biotech firm, Royvent Sciences, and was able to successfully raise hundreds of millions of dollars for its IPO, further ballooning Ramaswamy's wealth. After rotating through executive positions, he then left the company in 2023 to focus on his presidential campaign. So how did Ramaswamy actually end up in politics? Well, Ramaswamy apparently wasn't really interested in politics until Trump. Allegedly, he didn't even vote in the 2018, 2012, or 2016 elections, but backed Donald Trump in 2020, and has made large donations to the Republican Party ever since. He also apparently considered running for the Republican nomination in the 2022 Ohio Senate race, but ultimately decided against it. As such, he first started really making headlines in early 2022, when he launched Strive Asset Management, an investment management firm that was explicitly anti-ESG. For context, ESG, or Environmental, Social and Governance, is a framework used by most large investment companies to assess the environmental and social impacts of a company before deciding whether they should invest. Now, Ramaswamy apparently thinks that ESG is nonsense, both because it mixes politics and business, and because he thinks that ESG is an agenda being pushed by the woke left. Anyway, following his firm's controversial launch, Ramaswamy then announced his run for the Republican nomination in February 2023. And since then, he's made a name for himself with his, let's say, radical policy suggestions. Per his website, he wants to use the military, drones if necessary, to secure the southern border, ban addictive social media for those under 16, scrap basically every environmental regulation to make it easier for American companies to engage in fracking and burn more coal, ban US businesses from expanding into China, end civil service protections and impose term limits on bureaucrats, and shut down the Department of Education, FBI, and IRS. He also thinks that the US should limit aid going to Ukraine, calling Zelensky a bully, and has stated that the US should reduce its military aid budget to Israel. Perhaps his best-known policy, though, is raising the minimum voting age from 18 to 25, a suggestion so radical that it would require repealing the 26th Amendment. 
Under Ramaswamy's proposed amendment, Americans aged 18 to 24 could still vote, but only if they undertake six months of national service or if they pass a civics test. It's not just his policies either. Ramaswamy has also endured a series of controversies which have further boosted his public profile. Before his campaign even began, he allegedly paid a Wikipedia editor to remove mentions of his involvement with the Ohio COVID response team, and remove the fact that he was a recipient of the Paul and Daisy Soros Fellowship for New Americans in 2011. For context, Paul Soros is the older brother of George Soros, notable billionaire and subject of numerous right-wing conspiracy theories. Ramaswamy has also stated that he believes that the federal government may have been involved in the January 6th riot, and flirted with the idea that federal agents may have hijacked planes on 9-11. I, 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 I think it is legitimate to say how many police, how many federal agents were on the planes that hit the Twin Towers. Like, I think we want it. Maybe the answer is zero. Probably a zero, for all I know, right? I have no reason to think it was anything other than zero. But if we're doing a comprehensive assessment of what happened on 9-11, we have a 9-11 commission, absolutely that should be an answer the public knows the answer to. Now, perhaps unsurprisingly, Ramaswamy's policies and off-the-cuff remarks have attracted criticism from the so-called mainstream media. But his poll numbers among Republicans are surging. 538's poll aggregator currently has him on 10%, in third place behind Trump and DeSantis. But DeSantis' numbers are falling fast, while Ramaswamy's are rising. And a couple of the most recent polls even have him ahead. Ramaswamy also performed relatively well in last week's debate, where a plurality of Republicans said that he won, and he was reliably the most Googled candidate. So could Ramaswamy really win the nomination? Well, as things stand, no, probably not. Trump is still the favourite by absolute miles, and unless something rules him out, he'll probably win it. In reality, Ramaswamy almost definitely knows this too, and he's probably really just vying to become Trump's vice presidential pick, or at least win a seat in Trump's cabinet. This would probably also explain why, despite nominally competing against him, Ramaswamy has been one of Trump's most vocal defenders. For context, Ramaswamy has said that he would pardon the former president if he was convicted of his various possible crimes, and called President Trump the best president of the 21st century during the debate. He's also generally refused to criticise him during his campaign, and their only real point of disagreement seems to be over the Trans-Pacific Agreement, a US-led East Asian free trade deal first dreamt up by the Obama administration that Trump withdrew from in 2017. Now, this general alignment with Trump has made Ramaswamy popular with Trump supporters, and polling backs this up. If Trump were to drop out of the race for some reason, then Ramaswamy would become the favourite for the nomination, picking up many Trump supporters' backing. You get the idea then. Ramaswamy probably knows that he's not going to beat Trump this time round, and he's probably just eyeing up a cabinet position, or possibly laying the groundwork for a serious run in 2028 if Biden wins in 2024, where he would probably have a pretty good shot at competing against Vice President Kamala Harris, who isn't as popular as Biden. And to be fair, this probably makes sense from Ramaswamy's perspective, given the trajectory of the Republican Party and the fact that he's only 38, meaning that he could have a long and potentially very successful political career ahead of him. Now, following stories and doing independent journalism often requires a fair bit of travel, from attending the NATO summit in Lithuania or Munich Security Conference, to exploring Audis across Germany, or being forced to hang out with fellow Nebula creators. Okay, it's not all that hard. What's consistently annoying, though, is the technology. Because when you need to work from abroad, or even just access the services you're used to, it's often way harder than you'd like, requiring endless verifications, validations, and authentications. And as I'm sure you know, that's where NordVPN comes into play, helping you to connect to the internet wherever you want. Whether that's connecting back home so that your work account doesn't freak out, or connecting in another country from the comfort of your living room to get discounts on your next trip. That's right, very often other countries get cheaper prices for things like flights, with research finding that US consumers pay up to three times more. 
Now, NordVPN are actually running a major back to school promotion right now, which means that if you sign up for a two year plan, you not only get a massive discount, but you also get an extra four months. That's a huge discount just for clicking our link. And if you do, then Nord are likely to continue sponsoring a TLDR content. Now, we've been told that sometimes when people hear us talk about NordVPN, they open up a new tab and just start searching. But crucially, don't use our link. Now, I'm certainly glad that they get access to the service, but you only get the discount and support the channel through that link. So if you're trying to improve our journalism by signing up to Nord, then make sure you use our link when you do. And that way, you'll also get their great service at a discount.